right. Now, no arguments. You just close your eyes. It's all right, Sue Ann. She's seen you without makeup before. <laughs> Oh, Murray. <laughs> I just hope my mind's still active when I'm your age. <laughs> Here, close your eyes now. All right. <laughs> now, you can open them. Well, what do you think? Can I close them again? <laughs> what is that? It's a free-form mobile representing the, the four basic food groups. I used it on a special I did last week. Called, what's all this fuss about famine? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just the thing to brighten up your new apartment. <laughs> oh, well, gee, uh, Sue Ann, I'd have to check the lease to make sure there isn't a regulation against, you know, hanging food. <laughs> well, I know you'll find just the right spot there. I know. Why don't you put it in your bedroom? You must need something in there to relieve the tedium. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Love your ring, Mary. <laughs> this is Ted Baxter saying happy days are here again. Well, well, did you make that up, Ted? No, it's from some song. I forget the name of it. <laughs> what are you so happy about? The circus is in town, and they want me. Oh, terrific, Ted. Do you have to bring your own shovel? <laughs> So happens, you want me to ride at the head of the parade. I'm this year's Grand Marshal. Oh. Would have had it last year, except for that big, dumb, stupid basketball player. Those are sports on Channel 8. <laughs> he made a fool of himself. What happened? Well, he got into the wrong car. He uh, squeezed into the little one with all the clowns and kind of wedged them all in. They had to take the car apart so they could get out. It sort of ruined the effect. Mm -hmm. Gee, it sounds like the Grand Marshal's job had the history of disaster. Yeah, well, this year they've got me. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Nothing can bug me, Murr. Nothing can spoil my day now that I'm going to be Grand Marshal of the Circus Parade. Forget it, Ted, you aren't. What? I said forget it. My anchor man isn't marching down the street with a chimp. Tends to give him an undignified image. Oh, no, it won't give me an undignified image. I was talking about the chimp. <laughs> I'm not appreciated. After giving seven years of the best I've got, Lou still treats me like dirt. Oh, come on. Treats me like a child, Mary. Oh, Ted, that's not true. I mean, sure, maybe he bosses you around, but he doesn't treat you like a child. He respects you as a mature adult. Then why won't he let me go to the circus? <laughs> I mean, that's a great honor, Mary, being a grand marshal of a circus. A great honor. The grand marshal rides ahead of the elephants. Well, Ted, for what it's worth, I think Mr. Grant was wrong. Then why don't you talk to him, Mary? He'll listen to you. Maybe he'll change his mind. Well, I'm afraid it's a little late. I heard before I left the office that the circus has already chosen another Grand Marshal. Already? Boy, they don't waste any time, do they? 
Who'd they get to replace me? The mayor, the governor? Chuckles, the clown. <laughs> Chuckles? A kiddie show host? A grand marshal of a circus? A clown? Oh, Mary, I hate to say this, but I hope they laugh at him. <laughs> Leaving 28 people condominiumless. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> now we're from one of our sponsors. What's the matter with him? Oh, he's still angry over Chuckles leading the circus parade today instead of him. Oh. And I'll tell you something more, I don't blame him. Oh, come on, Mary. You're going to be reasonable now, aren't you? You're going to be fair and look at both sides of things and see Ted's point of view. I mean it, Mert. You know how close Ted came to quitting his job over this? Not close enough. <laughs> Oh, my. Oh, dear. Mr. Grant? Oh, Lord. Mr. Grant? Something terrible has happened. What is it, Lou? Someone we all know is dead. What? Hmm? Who? No, I won't tell you about it now. I don't want to upset you. Mr. Grant! Where's Ted? I got to tell He's Ted. He's on the air. Well, what happened, Lou? Who died? Will you tell us? Chuckles. Chuckles the clown is dead. It was a freak accident. He went to the parade dressed as Peter Peanut. <laughs> and a rogue elephant tried to shell him. <laughs> I gotta get this on the air. Before you start working on the formal obituary. Chuckles' real name was George. His wife's name is Louise. The elephant's name is Jocko. <laughs> we'll be back right after this commercial. Ted, listen very closely. Chuckles the clown was just killed. He was dressed as a peanut and an elephant crushed him. Stop trying to cheer me up, Lou. <laughs> I mean, that's funny, but that's in bad taste. Ted, it's not a joke. You mean it? Yes. Good Lord. All right, now listen. Murray is working on a formal obituary for tomorrow. You go on now and you'll just have to ad-lib something. Well, what did I say? I hardly know the man. Well, sure you did. You knew him. You were on his show. Well, it's hard to know a man is chasing you around with a rubber chicken. <laughs> Ted, just say something short and simple and warm. You can do it. We're counting on you. Don't worry, I won't let you down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sad news. One of our most beloved entertainers and close personal friend of mine is dead. Chuckles the Clown died today from... <laughs> from, uh... He died a broken man. <laughs> Chuckles uh, leaves a wife. At least I assume he was married. He didn't seem like the other kind. <laughs> I don't know his age, yeah, but I guess he was probably in his early 60s. It's kind of hard to judge a guy's face, especially when he's wearing big lips and a light bulb for a moment. <laughs> but he had his whole life in front of him, except for the 60-some-odd years he already lived. <laughs> I remember Chuckles used to recite a poem at the end of each program. It was called The Credo of a Clown. I'd like to offer it now in his memory. <laughs> a little song, a little dance, a little seltzer down your pants. <laughs> That's what it's all about, folks. That's what he stood for. That's what gave his life meaning. <laughs> Chuckles like to make people laugh. You know what I like to think? I like to think that somewhere up there tonight, in his honor, the choir of angels is sitting on whoopee cushions. <laughs> this is Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. <laughs> Chuckles worked for this station for 20 years. The least we can do is put together some kind of tribute to him. Well, I think I've got a title for it. Uh, Requiem for a Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't very respectful, Murray. No, I'm sorry, Lou, but I can't help it. I mean, I've been coming up with dumb jokes about it ever since you broke the news to us yesterday afternoon. What a shock. <sighs> it sure was. A real tragedy. A terrible thing. Lucky more people weren't hurt. 
Lucky that elephant didn't go after somebody else. That's right. After all, you know how hard it is to stop after just one peanut. <laughs> It's not funny, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what are we laughing at? <laughs> It chuckles. <laughs> That's not nice. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> Lou. So why do why do I say things like that? <laughs> it's a release, a, a kind of defense mechanism. Oh, it's like whistling in a graveyard. You laugh at something that scares you. We laugh at death because we know that death will have the last laugh on us. That's very good, Lou. <laughs> Not only good, it's heavy. <laughs> Ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. It tolls for thee. <laughs> Movingly put, Lou. Why does it toll for me? <laughs> but this could have happened to any of us, Ted. Right. Somewhere out there, there's an elephant with your name on it. <laughs> You're right, Lou. It could have been me. Oh, no, I couldn't. I wanted to go, and you wouldn't let me, remember? Dad, it doesn't work that way. You saved my life, Lou. You saved my life. Please, Ted. I feel bad enough today. <laughs> oh, Ted, my car's being fixed. I wonder, could I ride with you and Georgette to the funeral tomorrow? Sure, the more the merrier. <laughs> Mary, dear, there's no point in duplicating efforts. I'll do the tribute to Chuckles this afternoon on my show. No, no, I'm, Sue Ann. I'm peeling onions. My eyes will be too puffy for anything else. Sue Ann, why is everyone being so callous about this? Callous? Well, I'll have you know, dear, that Chuckles and I were very close. I baked the first custard pie he ever sat in. <laughs> well, all right, maybe callous is not the word, but the man died. And it seems to me the only people who are showing any reverence around here are Mr. Grant and me. <laughs> Cut it out, Mary. I can just see the insurance claim. <laughs> Cause of death, a busted goober. <laughs> I don't know what you two are laughing at, but I'll take a chance. It's dirty. <laughs> Bert, you're not still making jokes about that. I'm sorry, Mary. Oh, uh, it, it's a release, Mary. People need it to get over a tragedy. Everybody does it. I don't. Now, shall we go over the trivia? Oh, yeah, right. That's a good idea. I took your suggestion, Mr. Grant. I screened some of Chuckles' old shows this morning. Uh -huh. Some of his best-known characters were Mr. Fee-Fi-Fo, <laughs> Billy Banana, <laughs> Aunt Yoo-Hoo, and, well, of course, Peter Peanut. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. No, I'm sorry, Mary. Well, that's perfectly all right, Mr. Grant. The tribute was your idea, however, if you think it's funny. No, no. No, you're absolutely right. The, the guy deserves a dignified farewell. Exactly. Okay, I thought what we'd do is show some film of Chuckles at work and then simply the words as we remember him. Oh, Mary, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's nice, really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great idea, uh, as we remember him. Um, who was that you who? Well, I don't 
think we'd want to use Aunt Yoo-Hoo. Why not? What did he do as Aunt Yoo-Hoo? Well, no, not much. He just, uh, he put on a dress and screamed, Yoo-Hoo! <laughs> And then at the end of the show, he'd turn his little back to the camera and bend over. And on his bloomers were written, the end. Maybe they should bury him that way. <laughs> okay. I give up. You win. Chuckle's death was a scream. No, oh, come on, Mary. We're not laughing because he's dead. I mean, we all like him. And we're very, very sorry. Well, then why are you laughing? <laughs> Mary, dear, don't the circumstances strike you as being just a trifle bizarre? After all, the, the guy died wearing a peanut suit, killed by an elephant. Yeah. Born in a trunk, died in a trunk. <laughs> Just forget what he was wearing. Suppose he hadn't been dressed as a peanut. Would his death still be funny? Could have been worse. He could have gone as Billy Banana and had a gorilla peel him to death. <laughs> Buck to have my shoes done. It's a cream shine, I think that's what he would have wanted. Why do people always send flowers when someone passes on? What would you suggest, dear? Fruit? <laughs> that's so sad. Funerals always come too late. <laughs> Sure, I understand that, Georgia. Well, I mean, we take people for granted while they're with us. Then when we're gone, we wish we'd been nicer to them. So we dress in black and cry our eyes out. Why don't we ever think to do that while they're still with us? Good question. I wish I were nice to the chuckles when I had the chance. I kind of look down on them, you know, being a clown and all. I was prejudiced against him just because his skin was different colors than mine. Hey. Not much of a crowd, is there? No. If this were my funeral, it'd be packed. That's right, Ted. It's just a matter of giving the public what they want. I wonder which ones are the other clowns. You'll know soon. They're all gonna jump out of a little hearse. Oh. <laughs> this is a funeral. A man has died. We came here to show respect, not to laugh. I'm sorry, Mary. No more jokes. <clears throat> My friends, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved with mankind. Therefore, ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Hey, Louis, stole your poem. <laughs> Chuckles the Clown brought pleasure to millions. The characters he created will be remembered by children and adults alike. Peter Peanut. Mr. Fee Fi Fo. <laughs> Billy Banana. And my particular favorite, Aunt Yu Hu. <laughs> and not just. Not just for the laughter that they provided. There was always some deeper meaning to whatever Chuckles did. <laughs> Remember, 
Mr. Fee Fi Fo's little little catchphrase. You remember how when his arch rival Senor Kaboom <laughs> hit him with a giant cucumber and knocked him down. Mr. Fee Fi Fo would always pick himself up. <laughs> Dust himself off and say, I hurt my foot. <laughs> Life's a lot like that. From time to time, we all fall down and hurt our foot. <laughs> If only we could deal with it as simply <laughs> and bravely and honestly as Mr. Fee Fi Fo. <laughs> and what did Chuckles ask in return? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> in his own words, a little song, a little dance, a little seltzer, Donnie. <laughs> Excuse me, young lady. <laughs> yes, you. Uh, would you stand up, please? Uh... Please, please, won't you? <clears throat> you feel like laughing, don't you? <laughs> Don't try to hold it back. Go ahead, laugh out loud. Don't you see, nothing would have made Chuckles happier. He lived to make people laugh. Tears were offensive to him, deeply offensive. He hated to see people cry. So, so go ahead, my dear. Laugh for Chuckles. <laughs> I just felt like such a fool standing up there like that. I Mary, forget about it. Everybody else did. Right. All in all, it was a very nice funeral. All's well that ends well. <laughs> Coffee will be ready in a minute. You know, it's the sort of funeral I would want. Oh, not me. I want to be cremated and have my ashes thrown on Robert Redford. <laughs> What about you, Lou? Me? Yeah. I don't want anybody to make a fuss. When I go, I just want to be stood outside in the garbage with my hat on. <laughs> what kind of funeral do you want, Mayor? Well, all I know is I just don't want an organ playing a lot of sad music. What do you want them to play? Everything's coming up roses? <laughs> I'd like a nice fancy funeral. I mean, if I were going to die. What do you mean, if? I'm not going. <laughs> Why not? And how else are you going to be reunited with your brain? <laughs> I'm not going to die. You see, I'm in this thing where if I get sick, I mean, real sick, where I'm about to go, they just take me away and freeze me. Then in about two or three hundred years, when they find a cure for whatever it was that made me sick, uh, they'll just unfreeze me. Uh, Ted, when they freeze you, could you do me a favor? Sure, ma'am. Would you take this with you? <laughs>